welcome back to i guess like part three of the i i don't know i'm not gonna call it part three because technically it's its own little topic so we're talking about microsoft azure and in our previous video we were talking about what does registering an application look like in terms of the active directory so we didn't walk through a specific example but we talked high level what happens and you know the things that it creates what are they intended to do and how does this fit into the bigger scheme of authentication and authorization and security and so now that we have that under our belt we are going to move on to our next topic which is closely related to the topic that we just talked about and that is role-based access control Woo. okay so what's the deal so as I said before, I'm assuming a couple things going into this video. So if these are foreign concepts to you and you've never heard of them yet, you need to go watch the previous video. So I'll putting, be putting links down below. I'm assuming that you know what the Azure Active Directory is and what it plays in terms of, uh, in terms of authentication. Additionally, I'm assuming that we know how to use the Azure Active directory in terms of accessing our applications now, not necessarily through the portal, but high level and, you know, more figuratively, what does that look like and what is supposed to be going on, um, why we register our application in the directory and what happens when we register an app in the directory. Additionally, I'm assuming that you know what an application object is and what a service principle object is as well, also called a security principle. So, with those fundamental concepts, let's walk through the process of creating a service principle. So now that we know what it is and why we use it, we're going to go through the process of creating one through something called role-based access control. Additionally, once we've created our service principle, we're going to then talk about how to set up our environment so we can use our service principle in some of our code, some, some of our applications, and what that process is going to look like and some of the headaches that can be a little bit confusing if you aren't aware of the things that can potentially go wrong. And then using our service principle to access a resource inside of Python. So we're going to be walking through what that looks like and how we can use it uh, inside of our code to access different resources. Now, at this point, I'm not expecting you to know what role-based access control is yet, but we will be covering that. Um, additionally, when we create our service principle, you'll find a lot of examples of how to do it and you know what it looks like, but a common theme you're going to be seeing is they're going to be using examples that leverages something called the Azure command line interface, also called the Azure CLI. So because this is just such a common example you're going to see in the documentation, we will also be talking about downloading the Azure CLI and installing it. I'm not going to go through the entire process just because I have it installed on my system, but I will walk you through going to the link and downloading it and at least getting you started when it comes to installation. So that's really the reason we're doing the CLI is just because when you start going onto the documentation, um, that's usually the most common way of creating a service principle. doesn't mean it's the only way, but it tends to be the most common documented way. Okay, so what is role-based access control? I have a video, I'm not gonna play it because <clears throat> basically you won't hear the sound now that I'm recording. However, if you want, you can gladly watch the video if you download the presentation. Also, if you go to the link in the resource link portion down below of the slide, you will also find the video on that page. So access management for cloud resources is a critical function for any organization that is using the cloud now. We've already known that hopefully at this point, we know we have sometimes very complex applications that have to access many different resources and all this type of stuff. So making sure that we can manage who accesses those resources is vitally important to the smooth operation of any kind of IT department. So Azure role-based access control helps you manage who has access to Azure resources. So high level, it's gonna help us determine and who can access those resources. And then additionally, what they can do with those resources and what areas they have access to. So this is another kind of topic where it's it's creeping in again, and hopefully you're catching on to a theme here, customizing. 
we can make it very granular. We can be very specific about who can access, where they can access, and in some cases, how much they can access. So Azure Role-Based Access Control is an authorization system built on Azure Resource Manager that provides fine-grained access management of Azure resources. Now, you might be asking, how does this relate back to you know, service principles? We will talk about that. There's a visual that I have uh, down a few slides that kind of gives you at least a high-level overview, but one topic we're, that's covered in that particular visual is the idea of the security principle, which we talked about in the previous video. So what is it? With a role-based access control, it allows us to define the following points. Who has access? what type of access, and how much access. The way you control access to resources using Azure Role-Based Access Control is to create role assignments. This is a key concept to understand. It's how permissions are enforced. A role assignment consists of three elements. Security principle, we've heard that before. Hopefully that doesn't confuse anyone. Role definition and scope. Okay, so three components that define our back, our back. I guess that's how you would say it. Oh, nope, I don't want that. I hope it's not playing. Is it not playing? Okay, good. I didn't want it playing. Actually, this is a good point too. I'm gonna to show you the documentation page if you're confused. So if you click the link below, um, it will redirect you to this page and they'll kind of go through some of the topics that we're talking about, but obviously in more detail with more visuals. So if you want a deeper understanding, I would highly recommend you go to this page, pretty much with any of the links below. You know, if you really want to start going into the nitty gritty details, you should go to that documentation and you should read through it to a certain extent. I mean, these videos is going to give you at least a high level overview, but I definitely would not call it a, you know, comprehensive of every aspect and every detail that you might need to know. So, you know, most of the links here, I would highly recommend you go and watch them. The videos are more of a supplement that at least tries to explain some of the more complicated issues. Okay, so important concepts related to role-based access control. We listed them in the previous slide. First one is roles. A role definition is a collection of permissions. It typically it's typically just called a role. A role definition lists the operations that can be, for be performed, such as read, write, delete, Roles can be higher, high level like owner or specific like virtual machine reader. So the role is basically, as I said, a collection of permissions. So Joe might have a reader role, right? So I'm gonna give Joe a reader role. And so here we can define what the reader role looks like. What are the permissions that a reader role takes on? This is where the template aspect comes into play. So with an application, remember, we can define all the operations it can do. Can do. With a service principle, we can define a role and we can say, hey, these are the permissions that it has. So these are the things that we're allowing Joe to do with that application. And so um, Additionally, we have high level. So with owner, you can kind of think of that as like the master has full access to all resources, including the right to delegate access to others. So this is kind of the umbrella one that catches everything. Then you have contributor, then you have reader, then you have user access administrator, and you can even create your own roles and more specific ones and all sorts of different things. So roles are kind of a, a template when it comes to defining a collection of permissions. Some are more generous with the permissions they offer like owner and some are more restrictive in the sense of something like a reader. Additionally, we have scope. Scope is the set of resources that the access applies to. So when you assign a role, you can further limit the actions allowed by defining a scope. This is helpful if you want to make someone a website contributor but only for one resource group. So we've seen before that we can take a bunch of different resources and we can group them into resource groups. Now, when we define a role, we can then define the scope of that role in a sense. So we can say, hey, this particular role only applies to the database group. 
or this role only applies to the website group. So again, it's allowing for more customizability and then also allowing for a more granular control. So I can take this template and I can make it as broad or as specific as I want. I can say this role applies to different resource groups or it's very narrow. I only define it for a very specific resource group. So that's where scope comes into play. And then we go into security principle. A security principle is an object that represents a user group service principle or managed identity that is requesting access to the Azure resource. So here's a visual. <laughs> so we have a security principle. This is kind of like our template. This is kind of our our access point. This is what's going to be accessing our application. And then we have something called a role definition. So this is either using a built-in role, so something like an owner, or we can create our own customized role. So we can say, hey, this is the role for database, or this is the role for a virtual machine operator. So we define a role, and that role defines the permissions that this particular thing can do. So can it write? Can it delete? Can it uh, allow or can it allow other people to access this resource? And then we have the scope. So this role, where does it apply to, right? So does it apply to one resource group? Does it apply to multiple resource groups? Does it apply to a subscription or a management group? And so the visual on the right-hand corner, in the lower right-hand side, you have management group. So that's the highest level. You have subscription. It's the second highest level. Then you have a resource group, and then you have a resource. So you can create a role definition for very specific groups, or you can say for an entire subscription, or you can say for an entire management group. So you can say, hey, this role applies to multiple subscriptions. So here, I'm hoping this ties everything together, but you define the scope, you define the permissions it has, and then you basically apply that to a group or a service principle. So the service principle in our case is what's going to be using uh, our application. So we're going to be creating a service principle that defines, that uh, uses a, a specifically defined role, and we're going to use it for a particular defined group. So I'm hoping, I'm really hoping that you come away with at least a better understanding now of what is a service principle in terms of role-based access control and how that kind of ties back to the Azure Active Directory in the bigger scope of authentication and authorization. So the way I've always liked to think about it is really just, you know, you're basically defining what you can do with those applications. And so that's at least how I took away the kind of the documentation. It might not be the most formal definition, but I always look at the service principle as our, our, our access point, right? And so even though we have an application with all the things that it can do, um, we need to define a service principle who can interact with that application. And with that service principle, we can define its role. So we can say what it can do with that application. And then we can also define the scope. So where does that service principle uh, apply? Does it apply to multiple resources or does it apply to a specific resource? So that's the way I like to think about it. Um, hopefully that clears up any confusion, but hopefully it's a better understanding now. Okay, so now that we have that out of the way, we are going to download the Azure CLI. So this is how we're going to be creating our service principle with role-based access control. So we need to download it, obviously, before we use it. Now, if you go to the link in this particular slide, it will Go here, okay, I think I just pressed escape by accident. Okay, there we go, perfect. Okay, so it will take you to this page and on this particular page, you will see install Azure CLI on Windows. So I'm on Windows obviously, but there are other operating systems as well. So if you need Mac OS, here you go, and then any of the Linux options as well. Now, once you're here, you have two options to download the installer. So you have the Microsoft 
installer or you have the Microsoft installer with PowerShell. So if you want to use PowerShell to download and install it, you can just put this into the command or into the PowerShell and uh, you can just run this command, you should be good. I would recommend doing it through <clears throat> uh, just downloading it and then installing it yourself. That's the easiest. Keep in mind, they do have a beta version as well. So if you want the latest and greatest with uh, the newest features, then you can also download the beta. But for our purposes, we will be doing the regular one. You can see here, we'll just put it in my folder. And then we will open it. So once you save it, you can open it. And then it does take a few seconds. Basically, it's gonna be computing space requirements and doing a couple other things in the background. It shouldn't take that long, but I think it takes like a minute or two. But yeah, once it goes through this process, then we'll go through the process of actually installing it. It's very, very, very easy. You're gonna be going, why do I even spend time covering this? Because literally it's like two steps. And then from here, um, once we install that, I am think I'm gonna cut off the video and then our next video, we're gonna go through um, using, using the Azure CLI uh, from Visual Studio Code. And then we're gonna also talk about a little bit, at least beginning topics of the Azure SDK for Python, just because we're gonna be needing to leverage that when it comes to accessing our resources. So you just wanna make sure you accept the terms and agreements, you can read them if you want. There's a lot, but be my guest. And then guess what? You just press install and you're good to go. <laughs> so super easy, nothing too complicated. So I'm just gonna cancel all of this because I already have it installed. But yeah, you would just go through that and you would be good to go. Sometimes an error pops up for some people. Most time when that error does pop up, I actually haven't seen it cause any issues. So I'm going to assume it's fine. I would say maybe try doing it in uh, at running it as an administrator, that tends to fix things, but not always. But normally if that warning pops up, I actually haven't seen it impact anything yet. I will let you know if that obviously changes. Okay, and then once you've done that, um, we will walk through the process of logging in and creating our role-based access control. So at this point, yeah, that's it, perfect. So at this point, if you have any questions, by all means, put them down in the comments below. Otherwise, we will see you, God, video number four, where we're gonna start getting into the actual using of the tools. But yeah, so you know, if you have any questions, you know, put them down in the comments below. Again, if you're still kind of confused, give yourself a day or two. And then also I would encourage you to read some of the documentation. So thank you again for watching everybody. We'll see you in the next video.